Craig Anderson joins us on What's Next, and uh, great pleasure to help to have you with us, Craig. Craig is the sales director uh, for Africa at Temenos. Uh, Craig, great to see you. How are you doing? Aki, I'm doing very well, and thank you very much for this opportunity to be a part of this amazing initiative that you're doing. No, thank you. It's a great pleasure. It's wonderful to have you with us, and it's, you know, for me, it's so exciting to see how how much change technology is bringing to all of us. Um, and when you look at the technological uh, changes that are happening on this continent where more people have access to networks and data and connectivity, it's it's really quite exciting. And the banking industry is one industry that uh, Temenos focuses on. And, and certainly we've seen so many changes there. How, how do you guys at Temenos see the, 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 the banking industry developing in the short and medium term? And, you know, especially when you look at how many changes that have been happening over the last few years, especially with COVID-19, and, and I guess how money is changing and how we interact with money and digital banking, it's it's really changing rapidly, isn't it, Craig? It certainly is, Aki, and thank you very much for the question. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a question that most banks are asking us as Terminos on a day-to-day basis. Um, you know, the banking world is changing so quickly in front of our eyes. Uh, and it's changing at such a fast pace that as technology companies, we need to try and keep abreast of a lot of those changes and try and keep up to speed with the ever changing requirements from the end customer's perspective. So customers are looking for the seamless experience, you know, just like they get when they jump onto their banking app and they need to transfer money to their parents or their loved ones. It's done seamlessly. There's no more going into the branch, filling in a form, giving it to the bank manager, and he processes that uh, request, which sometimes can take days. Now it's taking seconds. Um, Technology like cloud, artificial intelligence, and the global spread of open banking is making all Mm. this happen. Um, As a result, uh, as Temenos, we're seeing the breakdown of the banking value chain and a host of new players like challenger banks, Uh, telcos, uh, fintechs, even your big tech organizations now competing with those incumbent banks. Um, We also see the rise of innovation, like new business models, uh, such as banking as a platform, banking as a service, embedded finance. I mean, we've just seen that banking as a service is around and valued at about $3.6 trillion in terms of opportunity. So banks now need to jump onto that bandwagon and try and take advantage of that going forward. Well, it's it's certainly very exciting times. And I mean, to your point about the telcos, I mean, with Vodacom's announcement today, for example, and you look at the financial services that some of these banks are offering, they're becoming, uh, some of these telcos are offering, they're actually becoming mini banks. And and if you just look at the transformation of, of, of bank branches, you know, the traditional way of doing things, the way we're doing things today, it's extraordinary how things are changing with thanks to technology. Uh, what would you say are some of the, the key challenges that the African market faces with regards to digitization? Thanks, Aki. Great question. Um, you know, whatever approach banks take uh, into the future and currently, uh, they've got to change the way they do things. And the reason being is that the speed to market you know, delivering a service, trying to get new products out into the marketplace as quickly as possible is really going to be your value proposition. And this is what sets apart the challenger banks versus your more uh, stable traditional banks. Um, But those traditional banks are now starting to really pick up that momentum in understanding scalability, speed, agility, uh, innovation, and probably the most important is cost efficiency. Um, And that's Mm. really putting those traditional banks kind of out there in the forefront, competing against these challenger banks and or digital banks, including the fintechs. This is why Terminos has evolved to become an open platform for composable banking. And what does that mean? A composable banking platform ensures banks can fight off the threat to their core business from disruptors like fintechs and telcos. It can also be possible to help banks to develop new revenue streams by extending their own portfolio of services and products. At Terminos, our open platform gives customers and partners 
the ability to build solutions in any way they would like. So composed uh, together with third party solutions from our fintech ecosystem, or they could be standalone solutions developed by the bank and all their partners, which are easily accessible through the Temenos open banking platform. And basically that is putting banks at the forefront in this exciting new phase of banking. It is a platform for everyone, uh, and that's Temenos' strategy. So banks, big and small, fintechs, microfinance, uh, banking as a service players can all see an advantage when working with Temenos on our everyone's banking platform. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting you say that. I mean, when you look at the amount of people that are going to be joining the internet for the first time on the continent, you know, you look at the kind of capacity that's been laid down, uh, the undersea cables that are coming, the data centers that are being built, uh, you know, something like 300 million people in the next two to three years are going to access the internet for the very first time. So hence the importance of what you're talking about. Compossible banking. Uh, you, you spoke about it just a second ago. Uh, why is it and what is it and why is it so important to banks in Africa? Thank you, Aki. Great question. So, you know, when I joined the, the industry of technology as a salesperson, um, back in those days, what we would do is we'd sell this monstrosity of a solution which banks then needed. But the problem was that when banks needed something different or needed something less, they were always pushed into this corner of having to spend millions and millions and millions of dollars to get a piece of functionality that that bank needed. So what Terminus mm -hmm. did is we've evolved, we've evolved our company to this, what we call Terminus Composable Banking. And this basically is breaking down its offerings into increasingly granular elements. We call these Terminus Banking capabilities. Think of these capabilities as Lego blocks, which banks can take in any way, shape or form, depending on what their requirements are at the end of the day. So a large bank could take individual capabilities like lending, deposits or accounts and quickly integrate that into their current landscape or technology infrastructure. This gives a bank the ability to very quickly offer products into the marketplace, whether that be a retail lending product or a deposit. Uh, banks can take up this composable service from Terminos. Uh, banks are even trying to take a complete digital offering or core banking service as an enterprise service, meaning fully mm. packaged with an extensive range of capabilities. All of these composable services can be customized by customers or partners using our extensibility framework without touching their core functionality. So what that's doing is really giving customers that ability to make changes without having to go out into the marketplace and ask technology vendors to kind of do this for them, which as at the end of the day increases their costs uh, in managing and supporting that solution. This is how Terminos Composability drives innovation and collapses product cycles to a matter of hours. Okay, well, wow, okay, and, and that you've got to be, you've got to be able to scale, you've got to be agile in today's market, that's for sure. I was just thinking about uh, our discussion with just, a, a, you know, a second ago about telecommunications companies and the announcement that Vodacom, for example, have made, and, and it's made, they're making quite an impact in the market when you, you know, facilitating connectivity and offering, you know, various financial services to many people. I, I think of M-Pesa as an example in the eastern part of Africa, and obviously that's evolving rapidly as well. Just out of interest, do you at uh, Temenos expect to see telcos playing a, a bigger role in serving those without access to banks? And I look at M-Pesa, for example, and obviously the market has matured, but what an incredible product for its time back then and remains relevant today. But are telcos going to continue to, to play a bigger role in servicing these people without access to banks? Thanks, Aki, for that question. Great question as well. So, Yes, we're certainly seeing telcos playing a much more aggressive role in providing these banking services to customers. Now, if you look at the amount of customers that all have a cell phone, and in some African countries, some people have two, if not three phones, which means that they yes. are always on their phones consistently. And what this means is that, you know, these customers are really looking to their telcos to provide a service to them outside of just mobile banking. And these telcos have really caught on to this wave of technology whereby they have you know, millions and millions of people that have a cell phone every day. 
and obviously have looked to see what these customers are looking for from a bank. And I've now started to offer these very similar services to what banks are offering. So today, banking is happening everywhere, uh, not just mm. with the banks. You know, with a high unbanked population in Africa, telcos have led the way with alternative mobile banking solutions and offerings, which gives the customer that friendly mobile service in order for them to re interact with the bank uh, through a third party like a telco in order for them to actually transfer a, a wallet to their loved ones in a different country. Yes. Uh, the shift to digital wallets is certainly uh, in full swing and we're seeing most banks around the African continent, including telcos and some of the financial service institutions, moving to this mobile wallet offering to give their customers that flexibility and ease to do business with them going forward. Um, and what this is doing is it's really um, creating a high smartphone penetration throughout the African continent. Our open platform at Seminos is powering these new financial products and services. We've offered uh, agency banking, we've offered wallets to majority of the banks that actually uses the Temenos composable banking open platform, which is certainly creating um, and, and pushing along this momentum. You know, this is a platform for everyone. So banks, non-banks, fintechs, yeah. and of course the telcos. A great example is Orange Bank in Africa, a um, hundred percent mobile and digital mm. bank in Cote d'Ivoire. They make use of this Temenos uh, open banking platform, but have also chosen to go with the composable pieces. So as their bank grows, you know, so does the uh, solution, uh, which is fantastic because they can really uh, manage their operating costs and they can obviously put strategies in place to see where the bank needs to be and where the bank wants to be. And then as the bank grows, so the solution grows with them, which is fantastic. Yeah, so very, very much a, a scalable option, which is a key to growth and in whatever you do today in a digital sense. Uh, exciting stuff, Craig. I mean, if you if you look at the the scenarios going forward and and the exciting things to come, for example, for us to look out for when it comes to uh, what Temenos is working on in the future of banking, we touched on quite a few elements of this uh, on the continent going forward. But what, what do you see as the future? What exciting things can we expect? Well, Aki, what's new and, 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 and trending at the moment is uh, buy now, pay later, which is really sweeping the global e-commerce sector. And Africa represents a large growth opportunity for buy now, pay later service providers. You know, there are already dozens of buy now, pay later brands across Africa, and the market is vibrant for this type of uh, solution requirement going forward. Uh, you know, it's Using buy now, pay later services in Africa is expected to reach what we're thinking around $7.1 billion this year. So Temenos has launched the first artificial intelligent driven buy now, pay later service, which helps bank create ethically driven lending programs by providing transparency into automated decisions and matching buy now, pay later uh, customers. Um, running on Terminus platform provides massive scalability for banks, non-banks, fintechs, telcos, in order for them to either develop their own buy now, pay later solutions, or they could make use of what Terminus has in terms of buy now, pay later. So that's one of the hot trending uh, solutions we're seeing uh, being taken up by many of the banks, especially in Africa, mm. just because, you know, banks are looking at different services and uh, trying to differentiate themselves, trying to offer different value propositions, because at the end of the day, any bank wants to continue to grow their footprint, but also continue to grow their uh, number of customers. And so banks are needing to think outside of the box when it comes to these type of services. Some of the other trends that we are seeing taking over Africa is the move from having technology on premise to more of on cloud, which gives the customer the flexibility to reduce the operating costs, having these massive IT teams sitting behind the scenes, having to manage support um, and continue to keep the system running, where now banks are looking to the vendors like Temonos to say, what do you have on offer in terms of cloud, whether that be cloud native or cloud agnostic. We are seeing banks going with a hybrid cloud solution. So whether they're using AWS and Azure 
or a Google Cloud uh, or any other cloud provider. So banks are really starting to look to see how they can streamline their own banking processes in order to try and get out as much as possible while offering a really good service and a fantastic product that continues to grow with each end customer's requirements going forward in terms of what do we need as individuals. Um, the Global Tech Disruptor uh, launched its buy now, pay later service on the Terminals platform, which has grown out to over 22 million loan applications in only just nine months. So those are some of the trends, Aki, that we are seeing changing the banking landscape um, in Africa at this moment in time. Quite extraordinary how things are changing and how, uh, you know, a simple product like a bank, financial services, just rapidly changing with technology. Craig Anderson, the sales director in Africa at Temenos, thank you so much for sharing those insights with us, Craig. Much appreciated. Aki, thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, look forward to chatting to you again.